This show is part of the RetroZap.com podcast network. And welcome everybody to episode 26 of the Animaniacast. Marlin! Marlin! It's magic. Oh, great Merlin. Use your powers to conjure up a brave and powerful knight to slay the dragon. Eye of Newt, an ounce of Sprite, send to us a great big knight. It's magic. Honey, we're home! Welcome once again to the Animaniacast. We are a podcast dedicated to the animated television series Animaniacs. Each and every week we revisit another episode of the series in the order in which it was premiered, and we discuss all the cultural references, all the gags, all share our memories of first watching it and what we think about the episode right now. I am Joey, and joining me once again is my brother Nathan. Waka waka! <laughs> waka waka waka! And all the way across the country, fresh out of Disney World, no less, is Kelly! Hello. <laughs> Kelly's had a very. I, I, I'm gonna. I dare be so bold. She's had, I think, a, a better week than me because she has <laughs> not only gone to Disney World, but got to watch one of her favorite things, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, last night. I love Rudolph, and <laughs> my dog is named Yukon Cornelius. So <laughs> hashtag not obsessed. <laughs> so you have one dog. So you have many dogs? Do you have? Two. Two. And so one's Yukon Cornelius, and the other one is, I think you said it was Vader? Vader, yeah. Vader. So there you go. In case wow. I know it, it's probably weird that Yoda's number one fan named her dog Vader, but he's solid black uh, and a German <laughs> Shepherd. And if we got him, and it's like, yeah, you're a Vader. Yeah. And if you get a green dog, I just don't think, I don't know if you want that dog. Mm. It might be some weird. Yeah. <laughs> might be something wrong with that dog. Okay. Uh well anyway. So we're all here. We're here to t- discuss not Rudolph the Red Rose Reindeer, Aww. but we're here to discuss episode twenty six of The Animaniacs. Mm. And uh Nathan, when did this episode first premiere? Uh Friday twenty second of October in nineteen ninety three. And you might wonder why that day sounds familiar. Yeah. It's because that was the same day that Alexander Serbarov made his record breaking ninth spacewalk, which would of course be later beaten by An Anatoly Solove, uh who now holds the world record of uh sixteen. So So it was the day <laughs> <laughs> it was the day where somebody broke a world record. For it, spacewalking. For spacewalking. But then it was beaten. Yeah. So is this really a notable date anymore, Nathan? No. Well, it, at the time, <laughs> like, whoa, what is happening today? And that's that's what happened. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, and actually, since it's above the Earth, is that even a world record? Oh, that's a good point. It's a space it's record. A, it's a universal oh. record. It's a universal record. First, it's the ninth human to do that. <laughs> Well, that's a very interesting fact, Whatever. Nathan. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Okay, well... <laughs> we're, we're so educational. I know, we try. <laughs> ah, try not. There you go. We're just doing We it. do. We yeah. do educate. We do it. <laughs> do. All right. Well, we have a few different segments right here. We have... Of course, we have a bunch of vaudevillian testimonials in this mm-hmm. episode uh, sprinkled throughout. We have our first cartoon, Bablin Bijou, uh, the classic potty emergency, and then it wraps up with Sir Yaxalot. A lot of content in this episode, guys. Uh, what did you guys think about it? Just in a few words. Uh, I enjoyed it very much. And Kelly, what about you? It's one of my most quoted episodes. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so let's go right into it. Um, testimonials. Let's go ahead and just kind of, I think, combine these into to one. It, there's there's two sets, at least, of testimonials, right? Yeah, well, there's three people. Basically. Three people. Okay. So, so the, first were, the first one we have right here is with, I believe his name was Sam... It was Cy Skyman. Cy... Cy Sykeman. Cy Sykeman. There we go. Cy Sykeman. And he's talking about, you know, the Warners, how they... 
you know, the things that they would get involved with. Uh, he mentions such old stars as George Burns, Jack Benny, uh, and of course, Milton Berle, which we hear for the first time that Milton Berle did not like Yakko. Mm-hmm. Burl and Yakko were always going at it. Yakko was always with the anvils on Burl's head. We'd hear a noise, we'd look, and there was Burl with an anvil on his head. I think it made him funnier. And, uh, Kelly, do you have any... Do you have? Do you remember Milton Berle at all as a kid? You know, honestly, probably the thing I, I know Milton Berle best from is he I, he probably was a guest on The Muppet Show. Oh, yep. So... He certainly was. Don't start with me, boys. Don't start with me, please. Hey. Hey, Burl. What? You know what? I've what? just figured out your style. Really? You work like Gregory Peck. I was... <laughs> Gregory Peck's not a comedian. Well? <laughs> now, just a minute, please. I have been a successful comedian half of my life. How come we got this half? <laughs> Look, did you come in here to be entertained or not? That's right. What's right? We came in here to be entertained, and we're not. Oh, yeah? I'd like to see you come down here and be funny. You first! <laughs> I probably saw him on Entertainment Tonight or, or news channels or something like that, but I don't remember specifically anything that he was in. But I, I do vaguely remember him in The Muppets. Yeah, Milton Burrow lived for quite quite a bit. Um, I just, looking at the... <laughs> looking at the... Uh, little call card right here that's uh, mm-hmm. from the Astor Theater uh, that's outside this theater when the vaudevillian guy, uh, Cy Sykeman's talking. It mentions all these people. It's like top billing is Cy Sykeman, Jack Benny, George Burns, and then it says and, and there's a taped on note that says the Warner Brothers and their sister, Dot. And then in parentheses in lowercase font, it mm-hmm. says and Milton Berle. <laughs> <laughs> so that's perhaps one of the reasons that Milton Berle hated Yakko so very much. Uh, there we go. Milton Berle, let's see, he died in 2002. So I wonder, I wonder what he thought if he ever saw any of these episodes. Or... <laughs> yeah, that's true. Milton Berle was alive to see these. So too bad we didn't get his opinion on it to see what he was, his real feelings about Yakko were. Um, but uh, when we come back from uh, the, the first cartoon, there's another uh what are we calling these retrospective vaudevillian thing of testimonials. testimonials yes and uh this one sh- you know a uh, woman is talking about uh dancing in the sigfield follies uh with the uh, the warner brothers and uh she just talks about you know that going on the the <laughs> i don't know the the sigfield follies um were a kind of a dancing girl routine i believe it says right here the original Ziegfeld Follies were a series of elaborate theatrical review shows that ran on Broadway from 1907 to 1931, starring many of the top entertainers of that age. Oh, so not Dancing Girls then, I guess. They were named for showrunner Florence Flo Ziegfeld Jr. So there you go. This is all outdated stuff. It's very brave, I think, of the writers to be putting this kind of stuff in. Yeah. Because um, they're referencing people that were either A, already deceased, or B, in their 90s, and or 80s or 90s. Uh, so children really didn't have any idea, mm-hmm. uh, most of them anyway, who they were. Um, it it kind of reminds me, sorry, but mm-hmm. I, it reminds me of um, the song in Annie, and I've brought up Annie before, yes. Bernadette Peters is, is Rita, and she was in Annie. <laughs> but there's a, a song in there called Let's Go to the Movies, uh-huh. and um, it references a, a bunch of different um, stars from that era, you know, like Betty Davis. Betty Davis is probably lying, and Greta Garbo is probably crying, while Robert Taylor is locked in her dying embrace. Chico and Bracho and Chaplin and Lloyd are all super. Sweet Mickey Mouse, Shirley Temple, and dear Jackie Let's Cooper. go to the movies. I had no idea who those people were when I was a kid watching that movie. Uh-huh. But as time went on, and then you, you hear about people in the news or you come across them, and I'm like, oh, that was in that Annie song. And you start making those connections, and you pay more attention. So I think, I really think that's kind of what the 
the creators of Animaniacs do with some of these uh, earlier references. Kids may not be exposed to this, but they're going to remember it from the show. And then when they see it out in the real world somewhere, you know, in the newspaper. Wow, I'm really dating myself. Sorry. <laughs> but um, print is know, dead on, online <laughs> <laughs> or on you know TV or something. It'll uh, it'll spark that memory. And oh, I remember hearing about that Animaniacs and and. And I think it'll make them more interested. Yeah, I would hope so. I mean, just to at least check it out, you know. Um, it's such a, you know, now I'm going to go off on a, a tangent here. But, <laughs> I, I, you know, there's a recent article that talked about how people are not seeing as much classic cinema as they used to. And one of the reasons for that is just because of the way that we uh, digest media these days. Hmm. We don't flip channels as much. Um, so we're not likely to just catch something halfway through because nothing else is on everything is i I miss those days yeah everything else is on demand and if you're not if you you know if you're not accustomed to it well i'll just watch some stuff on youtube and netflix and Mm -hmm. and uh i why go back in time and watch any classic thing so this article i I read which if i can find it i'll put it in the show notes was actually kind of cool because it talked about how the the author of uh, the article would sit down and discover films for the first time by sitting down with his grandmother and watching Turner classic movies and learning about film and seeing how it progressed from point A to point B today. Hmm. And that's kind I of love lost. Turner classic movies. Yeah. I mean, but that's kind of a yeah, lost true. thing these days. So this, the, the, the little short sort of made me re- recall the artist the movie that won the Academy yeah. Award a few years ago. Um, and, of course, that was a, a, a reference to the earlier days of cinema, silent films. And I realized you don't hear about that movie much anymore. It kind of came in and was quickly forgotten, mm-hmm. um, even in light of it winning the, the Academy Award. It, I, and I guess because that kind of stuff just doesn't seem to grab people yeah. Anymore. It's it's it a kind a of movie. Story. Yeah, you, movie. but you would have to actually sit and watch it. Like you couldn't just have it on in the background because otherwise you miss all the dialogue and mm-hmm. so I think that's why. And that's sad. Yeah. It, it was a great film, but uh I realized I hadn't thought about it in ages. It was like, "Oh, wow, I can't believe nobody's talking about that movie anymore." <laughs> yeah. I I I own it on Blu-ray. So mm. <laughs> there you go. Uh, well, you know, speaking of all the, you know, the different stars, you know, the, uh, the Ziegfeld Folly woman, uh, talks about, uh, you know, George Burns and, and Gracie Allen. Uh, there's the whole thing of George, you know, George Burns, who I never had any exposure to Gracie Allen growing up, but no. Nathan, do you remember George Burns as a kid? Yeah. He was in, uh, the Radio Land Murders, right? Or at least I guess he someone, was. They had someone that... Was, hey, looked a lot like him. At a least. George Lucas produced film, right there. There you go. I caught that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the, hey, but there you go. But that's another film, right there. Which Radio Line Murders is not the best film in the world, mm-hmm. but uh, it definitely references things like, well, a it has George Burns mm-hmm. doing some of his routines that he did when <laughs> he did for like eighty years. He died when he was, I believe, at least one hundred. Maybe he made it to one hundred and one. Mm. I know for the longest time he kept, you know. Talking about when I become 100, this will be, you know, he, he <laughs> willed himself to be 100, I believe. Um, but he'd always have a cigar in his hand, mm-hmm. usually never lit when he became, when I ever saw him on, on TV, which I believe George Burns was also on The Muppet Show, Kelly. Correct me I if I'm so. wrong. <laughs> but, um, he, when I ever, when I saw him, he usually, didn't smoke the cigar anymore i think in the 90s and stuff like that he would just kind of hold it as a comedy prop and not smoke it anymore but uh george burns you know kids at least in the 90s had some idea who he was today probably not uh they mentioned fanny bryce who was a popular singer and actress uh back in the early days especially in the in the she made the radio series the baby snook show and she was associated with uh, the Sigville Follies, uh, starting back all the way back in 1910. Uh, the, the the Warners at one point are in kind of a uh, Al Hirschfeld uh, sort of drawing right there. Um, I really like these, not only because of the reference to previous art forms and previous um, uh, celebrities and everything, but I also just love the fact that every black and white photo of them 
has their red dot noses, mm-hmm. which I just think is so cool. It really helps the, just from an artistic standpoint, really helps the, the whole scene kind of pop quite a bit. Yeah, and it makes it seem like they're supernatural, based, like <laughs> yeah, part of the world was black and white, but they're yeah, well, Pleasantville. Kind of, yeah, <laughs> you know, it is very ple- Pleasantville, yeah. And uh, there was one one other celebrity that I did recognize from a Disney film, uh, Robert Benchley. Hmm. Now, uh, Ethan's looking at me like, hmm, I don't, I don't remember this. Kelly, do you, do, do you have any idea what film I'm talking about? It is like a more obscure Disney film. Um, no, because <laughs> when you say Robert Benchley, all I can think of is Peter Benchley. So. Oh, no, not the <laughs> different one. <laughs> That's Jaws writer, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. Good. I'm getting my Peter Benchley's. <laughs> this is Robert Benchley. Robert Benchley was a humorist, and uh, he was in the Disney film um, "The Reluctant Dragon." And in that film, Peter Benchley. Now, darn it, it's Robert Benchley. Robert yeah. Benchley. <laughs> Robert Benchley is going throughout the Disney studio and seeing how things are made, and it starts off in black and white, and then as soon as he walks into the magical technicolor room where all the women are painting all the Disney cells, everything turns to color. Do you, does this ring any bells? Yeah, I, I remember this now. Okay. How appropriate that it's the reluctant dragon. And, and it's in the dragon episode. episode. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's all connected. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's a really, it's a really, really cool um, special. Not only just to see, you know, a few you know, cool old Disney shorts, but you get to see what the Disney studio looked like uh, back in the 1940s. Mm-hmm. You get to see a young Walt Disney uh, smoking a bunch of cigarettes watching <laughs> in the screening room, mm-hmm. uh, some of the, the Disney films, and a bunch of classic animators. It was really kind of a behind the scenes look at Walt, the Walt Disney Company at the time. So mm-hmm. I highly recommend that. It's, uh, it's available on DVD and stuff. Uh, if uh, you look for it, and uh, I'm sure on probably illegal copies on YouTube as well. So nice. <laughs> check it out if you can. Yeah, they talk about Dumbo and Bambi, right, in that one? I yeah, think. they talk about, like, yeah, they, they think they show some paintings of Bambi. Mm-hmm. It definitely kind of has this, uh, if if Roger Rabbit was like, it takes place in the same time period as Roger Rabbit. So it kind of all blends together for me in my brain. <laughs> Of what was in it and what wasn't. There was one last um, segment of uh, testimonials uh, towards the end of this episode where this uh, kind of older gentleman is talking about Yakko and the the Warners being discovered at Schwab's Pharmacy, uh, which apparently Schwab's Pharmacy was a popular hangout in, uh, in Hollywood. This is what our wonderful reference guide here says. The Schwab's Pharmacy, located on Hollywood Sunset Boulevard, uh, had a was a popular hangout for actors and other members of the movie biz from the 1930s and 50s. Closed around 1983, and the Warners were discovered there. The Warners being discovered there could have been a reference to the oft-told but false story about Lana Turner being discovered working at the soda counter at Schwab's. Uh-huh. So there you go. So that's the whole thing of them being discovered there, and then they show them with kind of the Warner Brothers executives. Um, this goes right in the face of <laughs> everything that we heard on our favorite news segment of news, <laughs> newsreel, the stars, which is they're being, you know, drawn and then jump mm-hmm. off the and page then off. And, and then they went to sh- the Schwab's pharmacy and got <laughs> discovered there. Yeah. That's what happened. <laughs> okay. It's all going to blend into the canon that way. Sure. Why not? I don't know. I personally like this more than newsreel, the stars. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, yeah, and also because we only see it one time in the runs of Animaniacs. That's true. <laughs> I'm sure if we saw that old guy talk about how nobody, Merton, Milton Berle didn't like Yakko, it might get old after a while. Yeah, I mean, they talk about that in every three, all segments about... Yes. It's a well-known fact. <laughs> it's a well-known fact. Uh, yes, we've heard that. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, I, I, I seem to remember watching old documentary films where they would show... Um, these old, you know, these vaudevillian actors of the day doing these kind of uh, interviews. Mm-hmm. Um, I know, like now, now there's this series documentary now on IFC, and mm-hmm. then they rerun them on Netflix when I actually catch them. <laughs> but uh, 
have you ever seen any of these types of documentaries where they have these old, old actor testimonials? Yeah, I've seen some. And I've seen an episode of Documentary Now. That was fun. <laughs> Kelly, how about yourself? Yeah, I... Well, I don't know about documentaries per se, but I've seen a lot of uh, interviews with, with older actors talking about the, the earlier days of Hollywood and uh, some of it not quite so nice. <laughs> <laughs> Often parodied, too. It seems mm-hmm. like this is kind of a style that is... It's definitely, you know, actually done very little, but parodied very often, like on Saturday Night Live or obviously things like this on Animaniacs. So it was a cool style to see. And I think it gave the it gave a little bit of history to the Animaniacs, which was Mm -hmm. which was nice. Yeah, got to get a chance that this was old. Well, speaking of old and and uh, the history of the Animaniacs, we get to see their first sound musical cartoon yes or however he put it i yeah. forget <laughs> so well, this is called babbling bijou okay so babbling bijou was written by tom minton and it was directed by jerry grandis um i'll go over the synopsis because it's a pretty simple one basically it's it opens up and it's all black and white and all these kind of barnyardish animals, very silly symphony-ish, are doing their typical bounce up and down uh, to the beat of the music. They mm-hmm. go inside and watch the uh, the this uh, kind of Lawrence of Arabia-ish kind of uh, film, right? Uh, and after a while, like you know, Dot is looking at the the guy who's up on the screen. She's blowing kisses to them. Um, and she's making a ruckus. She's causing people to get mad. Uh, eventually they run around the place and actually get onto the screen. They, you know, just like that Woody Allen film, I believe, <laughs> or, mm-hmm. or, but, or, but an opposite. And, uh, they run around and jump up and down and, uh, everyone gets, uh, uh, you know, paired up with somebody. So yeah. Dot got to get the, ending. <laughs> get Dot got the chic. And uh, Yakko got to ride around on the girl, and uh, Wacko got to, you know, almost kiss the horse at yeah. the end. So everyone got happy at the end, <laughs> except for... I, pro- had a, I had a question. <laughs> yes. Uh, you said Lawrence of Arabia, but I... And I, I didn't know if it was just me thinking this, but I thought that was more uh, Rudolph Valentino. Yes, that's what I meant to... That, thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Yes, that, yes. Rudolph Valentino, uh, Lawrence of Arabia is the, is the first thing you could think off the top of my head. It, it's the Sheik, right? Mm-hmm. The Sheik and the son of the Sheik and things like that. Yes, much way before uh, Lawrence of Arabia, which I think was like 1950s. I want to say is when that movie came out. Hmm. Ni- maybe 1960s even. So, yeah, much early. Thank you, Kelly. So. So yes, yeah, so she got so Dot falls in love with Rudolph Valentino kind of guy, and everyone's happy except for maybe the people watching the movie who you know got yeah to... they seemed all very upset. <laughs> but what did you guys think about this uh, this first cartoon? It was cute. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed. It, it was uh, a fun. Uh, I liked all the animation in it. It's uh, mm-hmm. very much like an old Mickey Mouse cartoon or something. So. Yeah. I like how that you know I'm I I have all the the old Mickey Mouse black and white cartoons on DVD when they were releasing all them on the Disney Treasure stuff, and I watch them all, and it's fun to watch those cartoons, mm-hmm. and it's also kind of painful to watch all those cartoons because they some of them hold up, but a lot of them don't really hold up a lot because but at the same time I was I I'd watch them and go people really like this at the time. <laughs> it's, it's interesting to me. Like when you watch, um, for example, um, they all bounce to the beat in this. Mm-hmm. In, in a lot of these early Mickey Mouse cartoons, Mickey, for example, will be walking to Minnie's house and he'll like be stepping on the stepping stones and he'll, he'll do it into a beat that's playing in the background all the time. Uh-huh. Ready? So he'll go, step, 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 fall, 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 step, step, mm-hmm. step, step. Fall, 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 mm-hmm. fall, fall, fall. And it's like, he'll do that like two or three times. And it's Three times is funny. <laughs> they know. 
but comedies it, and threes. You, yeah, but it's so much. If you took some of those old Disney or black and white cartoons, whatever they have to be, Betty Boop or whatever, uh, and you just trim it down to, I'm just going to trim it down to today's standards and and get that uh, one fall. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you'd have a 30 second long cartoon, I think, instead of five minutes or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing those cartoons like to do was always do this effect where. Like Pluto, if he's sniffing the ground or whatever, would come up right to the screen mm. and like oh, sniff the screen. Like his nose would be extra close. And I, I just imagine like, do people like really freak out? I'm like, sure they're screaming in the uh, <laughs> audience because they're like, going, it's 3D. He's smelling me. <laughs> or like they, the the dog, like a dog or a monkey or whatever, would like open its mouth like right to the screen mm. and like look like it's going to eat the camera or something like that. I don't know. They're they're those old cl- classic cartoons, whether it's Mickey Mouse or Oswald the Rabbit or Betty Boop or Popeye or whatever. They're fun to watch, um, and uh, if anything, just for the the history of them. This was a nice cartoon that got you got to see some of that. I was a little disappointed, however, that it wasn't truly a silent, or it was not as silent as it could be. Well, they say it's the first sound music, you know. Yeah. It's the introducing of sound is the first sound cartoon, so. Yeah, but I, I just were... I just wanted it to be more, I guess, like Steamboat Willie a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Like, um, almost like it, it, instead of it, you know, like hearing Dot's kisses, like, mwah, mwah, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I just wanted it to make, like, uh, more horn musics. It, more horn musics. Horn sounds instead. So, in other words... Instead of her making that noise, that kissing noise, it kind of made a, I don't know, like a sound of a trumpet, or mm-hmm. something like more music based. And uh, yeah, instead, we didn't quite get that. We got more like just traditional sound effect. It really felt to me like they just told the voice actors just make minimal sounds instead of taking it to the next level and making yeah. it a little bit more authentic. Which would be, let's just have the orchestra make the noises for the, the you know, the Animaniacs, which is what they used to do in the 1930s and stuff. Walt Disney did voice Mickey Mouse, but, like, in in um, in Plain Crazy and Steamboat Willie, I believe, but he sounded much different than he did today. So maybe even having the Animaniacs sound completely different, yeah. you know, would have been kind of interesting to hear. Um but overall, it was cool. I guess they were actually, um, according to some of the notes here on the amazing Animaniacs Wikipedia, um, <laughs> they were actually uh, the song which is playing is the nineteen uh, is a song from nineteen twenty nine. You ought to see my gal by Winston. Will I'm sorry, Wilton Crawley and his orchestra, um, and it was originally going to. They were originally going to play the actual recording um but then it got scrapped because after they took it to the animation company and then it got sent back to america the music didn't quite sync up so the orchestra actually had to redo that song um and that's that's why it's a little it doesn't sound it sounds different mm-hmm. so i was i was actually surprised that was a that was a, a, an old song i thought the the orchestra just made it up right there, so that was kind of cool to see. So anyway, yeah, that was neat. Um, I liked the. Uh, I, I noticed on the sign it says "free dish." Yeah, for, and then is that why everyone throws dishes at the guy at the exactly? Air? Okay, <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up, Nathan, because um, I actually looked that up, and that was one of the one of the ways that uh, people uh, theater owners got people to go in and see their films, especially during the depression, where. You know, you you could sell movie tickets for really cheap, and mm-hmm. then people would still not come in. So they said, "Well, how about we give you a free piece of china or free plate if you come inside?" And of course, being the depression and people saying, "Well, I could actually use that," so they go into the theater and they get a free prize. I'm I'm glad it wasn't free tomatoes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'd rather get hit by a tomato than a plate. Though, I guess I think. that's true, but it's just so messy. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know why they were so mad at him when he comes out and it's like it was the they threw him at the usher at the yeah, end. Yeah, the right? usher gets a bunch of bowls and yeah, he's just trying to do his job. Yeah, 
I really did like the look of that usher, though. He had mm-hmm. a really 1930s-ish kind of look to yeah, him. Yeah, I was worried it was going to look like Ralph, and I was like, that's going to be kind of weird for that's continuity. That's true. That's a good point. That'd Although be... Ralph was in that time, actually, if you see Newsreel, the stars. But again, kind of going from the first episode, we were talked about this kind of weird this this weird problem that Animaniacs has, where you're dealing with tunes, but then the, there's humans in here, mm-hmm. and you're not supposed to consider them yeah. tunes and necessarily. And this is supposed to be a Animaniacs cartoon, <laughs> so it should be everyone in it should be a tune tune right yeah. so yeah i could see how that could be confusing on a, a couple different levels so, good but, good job not having Ralph. <laughs> yeah but i like that character's design he definitely mm-hmm. he looked like he was straight out of a uh an old popeye or betty boop cartoon i really thought so good max fleischer stuff right there so overall first cartoon good animation style some 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 nice gags and uh, they made a reference to the uh, Washington crossing the uh, Delaware River. Too. That's true. They popped like, out of the popcorn mm-hmm. right there. A little That's art, fun. little art reference right there. Kind yeah. of a, almost a blink and you'll miss it kind of reference. But uh, that was cool as well. Any other moments or things that you guys really liked about this first cartoon, Babbling Bijou? No, I guess. I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Well, with that, let's go ahead and move straight on over to segment two. Hello, listener. This is Jess Harnell, the voice of Wacko and Animaniacs, and you're listening to Animania Cast, which is the best thing you could possibly listen to, especially if you're not wearing pants. I'd love to go on talking to you, but I can't because I've got a potty emergency. See you later. So the second cartoon is a classic, I believe. It's it's mm-hmm. referenced very often. I remember it as a kid. And mm-hmm. that, of course, is Potty Emergency. <laughs> <laughs> and Potty Emergency is written by Paul Rugg. It was directed by Rusty Mills. Nathan, what the heck happens in Potty Emergency? So the Animaniacs are watching a fun-looking movie about an alien trying to eat some woman's brains. And Wacko is <laughs> drinking too much soda, and he needs to use the restroom. Unfortunately, the restroom in the movie theater is out of order. So then he goes around town looking all over. No one will let him use his restroom. Uh, he, he finds a gas station that can use it, but it's too dirty. He ends up going to the the Himalayan mountains, I believe. And uh-huh. there's still people there. He can't go in front of people. And finally, he finds a potty in his bag and then uh, takes that into the movie uh, into the actual film, just like in the last little cartoon we saw, they go. He goes into the actual movie, yes, and uses the potty there. So it was two in a row of jumping in the yeah. screen. <laughs> so it's crazy. <laughs> well, what did you guys think? What do you guys like about uh, Potty Emergency? Any favorite moments? Favorite gags? What do you think, Nathan? Let's start with you. Well, I enjoyed it. I, I felt very much uh, freakazoid ish at the very beginning. I was like. Seeing the uh, woman screaming a bunch, I was like, "That's a classic, like yeah. freakazoid kind of." Okay, making gag, sense because Paul Rugg, of course, yeah, and I was like, "Of course, it's Paul Rugg yeah. uh, doing this episode." Uh huh. Um, and just even that alien that was chasing her seemed like a freakazoid kind of bad. Yeah, guy, he think. seems like a, you would keep, like that design could be on an episode of Freakazoid. Yeah, I could see him being a villain or something. If- that bad guy, by the way, did not. Ha- I could see his nipples. <laughs> This bad guy's nipples were being shown. Yes, predating Batman and Robin. <laughs> These characters are being shown. It was a big thing in the 90s, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> showed characters with nipples walking around. But, yeah, I remember Batman and Robin. So that was, that was the epitome of it. The uh, epitome of nipples. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it had that the MST3K. I caught that yeah. during the show. I was like, ooh. Yeah. Yeah, so, that was a really cool thing. I'm a, you know, Nathan and I, I don't know about you, Kelly, but Nathan and I, watched a lot of mystery science theater uh in the 90s quite a bit How about oh you? yeah no I, I watched it too and one time i was watching one of the movies daddy O, and uh-huh. the music was by this guy named johnny williams exactly and i had to go look it up online i was like that is that the john williams and apparently that was one of the very first movies that he did the music for exactly i that and that's one of the better um mystery science theaters is daddy O, I i believe mm-hmm. um yeah john johnny williams did <laughs> which is daddy O is such a, a, a that film is such like a i don't remember much of it but it has like beatniks and kind of rock mm-hmm. and roll and kind of stuff and it's kind of cool just to know that John Williams still talks like that, you know? Yeah. 
calls J.J. Abrams J.J. Baby and all that. I just like, yeah. that's so cool that John Williams is still kind of like a beatnikish kind of guy at heart, you know? <laughs> He's still like the... He seems like a cool guy. I'd love to hang out with him sometime. Okay. If anyone's listening and can make that happen. Please do. Just, just saying. I'd, I'd love to meet John Williams. There you go. Kelly mm-hmm. at BigShinyRobot.com. <laughs> totally. <laughs> So what else, what other kinds of things that we have right here? We have, of course, Rita and Runt make another cameo appearance. Mm -hmm. Rita and Runt have made a, it seems like they really trade off a lot. Like, they're always in the Warners cartoons. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the Warners always make an appearance in their cartoons. They're going back and forth. Well, they have those um, pay or play contracts, right? There you go. (laughs) It's true. Well, that means they didn't even need to show up. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. Um I I I kind of I like this cartoon. I mean, our memories of watching this. I mean, it's just a, such a funny delivery by Jess Harnell mm-hmm. doing the whole mm-hmm. thing. Um, just the potty 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 Don't think I about it. it. Uh, no, that's another when he's at the park and not and trying not to think about the potty. So a guy's <laughs> holding a hose yeah. right next to his you know pants. And then they're filling up lemonade, mm-hmm. the spoutings of the all the are going, sprinklers, yeah. um, which, yes, that is very hard when you do have a potty emergency <laughs> to go buy a fountain and stuff like that. It is, it is, I remember many potty emergencies as a, ch- I think that's probably why kids yeah, recognize this. You can relate to it. Yeah. Everyone's been in a car where you can't get out and you really got to potty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it feels like you're going to explode. And Yep. Yep. And especially, and then you get older, and then you, and then the the thing happens again. You just have yeah. potty emergency. Well, that's why you just wear adult diapers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not like I do that. Uh oh, oh no. <laughs> um, well, I I do remember this this episode kind of reminded me of of not a potty emergency that I had, but a potty emergency uh, that my grandfather had when we were <laughs> going on a trip up the mountain once oh. in Tucson, we have a thing called a mountain. It's just a small little, yeah, it's a mountain. It's a mountain. Well, technically it's a, <laughs> technically it's, it's a, a dormant vo- volcano, but whatever huh. it's a hill, but, uh, it was the climb a mountain and we had to go from downtown Tucson and then climb up the, the mountain okay. with this big group of people. It's this big event. And about as soon as we got out of downtown, he just turned to me and said, I don't know about you, Joey, but I got to I gotta use the bathroom, please. <laughs> I said, oh, okay, Grandpa. And we went to about three different places, and they all said, no, you can't go in here. You can't, because you, you have to be a customer or something mm. like that, or no public restroom. And I honestly blurred out how, how the, what the solution to this problem was. I'm, I'm hoping that somebody just let him go. But I remember him begging the people in these stores, can I please use the bathroom? And they said, no. Did so, he say potty emergency? He did not. <laughs> I think it predated Animaniacs, so he couldn't. Still, it would have probably <laughs> helped. So I really like that moment when when Wacko's going to Norm's knickknacks. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Can I use your bathroom? Bathrooms for paying customers only. You gotta buy something first. But I don't have any money. Then you can't use the bathroom! Well, it's a potty emergency! I'm scray! And Wacko has this moment of just like pulling out his mallet mm-hmm. and he's gonna go back in there and then he realizes, no, I really gotta go. I do need to use the restroom. <laughs> Maybe <first>. later. <laughs> so that was, that was a cool moment. Um, yeah, I noticed there was a dog right before that, also trying to use the potty. Just kind of a he runs right by a dog at a fire hydrant, like oh. sniffing it. So I'm assuming the dog also had a potty emergency. Just a uh, little extra. Yeah, and there, and another reason that probably the uh, the Warners are not uh, dogs because yeah, otherwise he just gone to the fire hydrant. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm surprised nobody's brought up the gas station yet. The gas station. So that fun. is my favorite part. The gas station! And it's something that, again, we're talking about relating to horrible bathroom experiences. Uh. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Nathan and I both worked at Chuck E. Cheese. Mm. Oh, no. And we both got to dress up as Chuck E. Cheese. Mm-hmm. That was our part of our jobs. I started it and then passed on the throne of Chucky 
<laughs> to Nathan. But at the end of the night, every night, you had to clean the bathroom. Mm-hmm. And boy, oh boy, we have bathroom stories. I'm sure we could share that. I, I try to block out of my brain. <laughs> that guy looked kind of like Steven Seagal or something. I don't know who that gas station attendant was supposed to be, but he was creepy and I didn't like him. Yeah. Careful. I haven't cleaned it in a year. <laughs> Body in there it's disgusting <laughs> what about um the moment where they go to mount everest did you try like me nathan to try to translate what those people were saying no because i've it's it said gibberish yeah so i was like i don't think it's even any language yeah i tried i was going i think they were swiss because they were holding up a swiss flag but um i couldn't i couldn't find any translation for it. I was holding up Google Translate up to my computer. <laughs> I tried Swedish. I tried Icelandic. There wasn't Swiss, because I think the Swiss actually speak German, but it didn't sound like German to me. So it must be gibberish. Yeah. Well, the yeah, subtitle said gibberish, so I'm like, good They're enough. going with the subtitle. Mm -hmm. There's also a, a quick moment, and listeners, if you can get this reference, I'll, I'll give you a free Animaniacs decal, um, because I cannot figure out the musical cue at that point where Wacko is looking out at the different people drinking water and drinking lemonade. Mm. And the music goes like this. Um, <laughs> it almost sounds like a hymn. It sounds like a like a some sort of hymn from church, hmm. and I thought it. I thought at first it was "Be Thou My Vision," but then I listened to "Be Thou My Vision" and was like, "No, that's not it." So, if you happen to know what that song might be, uh, let let us know. Animaniacast at retrozap dot com because um, I, I think it's a reference. A lot of times, the Animaniacs uh, orchestra does a lot of. If you listen to what they're playing, it, it references something that's going on in the actual episode. So they'll like play some, you know, someone's in the kitchen with Dinah when, you know, food is being prepared or something like that. So I'm just out of curiosity. What the heck is being played right there? If it has any relevance to water or lemonade or anything like that, uh, let me know. Uh, Go oh, ahead. I, I, yeah, was... I, I thought it sounded familiar too, but I, I couldn't place it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was thinking like, why didn't Wacko just go in his bag? Like, I mean, he, like, he jumps in he the jumped bag. in the bag. And the toilet's already in there. But then you're going to get the the bag all dirty. No, you go in the toilet. But then the, where does it go? Where does it go after that, Nathan? I don't huh? know. You take the toilet out and then you... <laughs> the toilet has a whole... I know. There's a, That's the thing. That's the one thing that this episode don't do while you're watching this episode mm. is wonder, wait a minute, this doesn't make any sense. It's like, wait, it, it's not supposed to make any sense. <laughs> Because there's a lot of parts in this where it's like, that was an ample opportunity right there. Like, you didn't have to go all the way to Mount Everest. Yeah, you're in the middle of the ocean. There's no one around you there either. <laughs> That's true. I did think of that for a second. Like, you were just in the ocean, dude. Come on. <laughs> just jump in the water. No one's going to know. There you go. <laughs> Take the toilet in the water. You're fine. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, but yeah, very fun. Um, some other references, like uh, there's a Ross Perot. Yes, Ross Perot, 1992. But it's like, go p row. I think it like said When I would read it, though, I would say, go p rot or something. <laughs> Just because he's trying to pee, I think. No, I, oh, oh, yeah. And uh, there was, of course, and his, he's holding a cup at the beginning of this episode when mm. he's drinking this giant thirst buster or something of a, of a, or big gulp, depending on where you are in the, in the country. Uh, but he's drinking that, and on the side of the cup it says Abyss Boy. And I guess, it, you know, the movie Abyss had just come out relatively recently before this. But uh, some somebody online said, perhaps that's a reference to uh, Mel Brooks' uh, The History of the World Part 1. And I think it is, because um, at, at one point, um, Mel Brooks has to be the quote-unquote parents cup your children's sensitive ears if they are sensitive he is the quote-unquote piss boy oh i said it oh there's a word okay <laughs> yeah and uh mel brooks's job was to hold out like a chamber pot for people in uh in the french uh part of that movie so piss boy 
Ah, oh, oui, monsieur. Oui. Oui, oui. Yes, a lot of it. Very fun. I just and a, a good ending to the episode too. Just uh, he finally uses the restroom and then he comes out and then gives the alien a kiss and then the alien's like he didn't even wash his hands, which is yeah important. Wash your hands after <laughs> using the restroom. And I guess there was going to be a deleted scene on this. Did you read this, Nathan? No, is that there's a deleted scene that people have pretty much summarized that this is because at the end of this, Dot does not have any lines in this in this particular cartoon. Huh. Although in a in a deleted scene, they are apparently walking out of the theater and she's complaining about people leaving trash everywhere on the ground and how uh, how mad that makes her. And as they walk out of the theater, uh, they look down and Wacko's mallet is right on the ground. Mm. <laughs> so the one that he left it. So Again, I, I, a cute joke, but yeah. I could totally see why they deleted it because that way they don't have to pay. <laughs> well, they, they, I think they animated it. Like there's, oh, wow. I, I, I saw online the animation cells that uh, were actually made for this. So somewhere out there, perhaps the scene is out there, and uh, who knows? Maybe in maybe in a future Blu-ray release of Animaniacs, we'll get to see it. Yeah, maybe that would be, that would be awesome. So, yeah, that, I could see why they didn't delete it, though, because, like you said, Nathan, just saying he didn't wash his hands, one joke, boom, we're done. Mm -hmm. Instead of, now let's go see what happened after they left the theater. It's like, no, you don't need to do that. Just cut yeah. the film. That's You're nice... done. He, he, the, the, the conflict has been solved. Mm -hmm. He has gone to the restroom. The end. And then you got a final joke, and everything's fine. <laughs> exactly. Mm, thank you. Oh, disgusting. He didn't even wash his hands. Well, we only have one more segment left in this episode, and that is Sir Yaxalot. <laughs> Sir Yaxalot was written by Paul Rugg once again, woo, and directed by Barry Caldwell. Uh, Kelly, uh, what could you tell us? What happens in Sir Yaxalot? The Sir Yaxalot takes place in Camelot, and King Arthur has a problem. There's a dragon going around and burning everyone to smithereens, <laughs> and they're still singing about Camelot. It's, it's a silly place, <laughs> and um, so <laughs> King Arthur summons Merlin, who pops up and goes, "It's magic." <laughs> mm -hmm. And he says, I need you to, to summon the bravest knights in all the land. So here come the Warner Brothers and Doc. And they say, did you summon the bravest knights in all the land? And he said, yes. Well, too bad. You got us. <laughs> so they go and try to find out what, what they can do to destroy the dragon. And so they create a, a comedy club. It's, it's so random. Yeah. And they have him come in and they put dynamite in front of him and he laughs and breathes fire and blows himself up. But the what the funniest part of all this is he's actually a robot. Yes. Mm -hmm. This episode can't get any weirder. Yeah. Yeah. He's a robot and falls to pieces and out come Pinky in the brain because in trying to take over the world they thought they would start with Camelot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I mean, what a twist ending right yeah, there. Yeah, I was so surprised. Yeah. Oh, I forgot the best part, though. Okay. It's every time they talk about the dragon, somebody goes, the dragon, the dragon, <laughs> the dragon. And then they say, well, somebody please stop this person from yelling the dragon. And then an anvil drops on their head. Yes. Yeah, you can see a paintbrush coming in and drawing. Yeah, them. kind of like, I forget which, uh, and uh, Looney Tunes used to do quite mm -hmm. a bit with Daffy Bugs, Duck. Bugs mm -hmm. Bunny and Daffy Duck would have, like, talk to the animator and the animator would reach out and paint some stuff. And mm -hmm. that, so That happened in a Tiny Tunes episode one time. Uh-huh. And... It was the director who was he was directing the episode, and you could see the the lines get thicker and darker and and everything else. But it was actually Steven Spielberg. Uh huh. Oh. <laughs> I may have seen that episode once or twice. <laughs> once or twice. Or... I also may or may not have audio sound clips from that episode. <laughs> oh, we love you, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So, so the dragon thing you mentioned the dragon thing. I guess that's a reference to a movie Hell's a Poppin', where a woman is is looking for uh, 
her husband, I'm assuming, and is is yelling out, uh, what is what does she yell out? Oscar, Oscar, Oscar. Um I couldn't find a clip of that. I, I saw the movie Hell's a Pop It on YouTube in little bits and uh I, I honestly I don't know how valid that uh reference is in this guide. But hmm. uh if I can find the audio, I'll put it right here. And if I didn't just play the audio I couldn't find the audio, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but uh, what do you guys think? What are your, what are some of your favorite moments on here? Because we have quite a few references. We might as well just talk to them as we go through our moments, I suppose. Yeah. Um, well, of course, Merlin just hilarious. <laughs> yes. I, oh, uh, magic! Do you remember Doug? Now this is a, a parody of uh, Doug Henning. <laughs> it's magic. Remember, this is a magical house, and anything in it can become magical if you just believe. You mean, uh, this apple's magical? Ah, uh, I can do a very magical illusion with that apple. Do you remember this magician at all, Nathan? I'm no. sure you the real picture. No? You know, I'm like... guessing Abraka Daniel is probably also based off him, because that's what Who's, who's Abraka what now? Abraka Daniels from uh, Adventure Time. Oh, okay. And he just goes, Abraka Daniel. Oh, okay. Possibly. Whatever he does a magic trick, and they're always really lame, but it's just so funny. <laughs> I like how I like how the Merlin slash Doug Henning magician uh, has this little like a uh, fanny pack on the front of his <laughs> <laughs> this front oh. of his robe. Interesting tidbit of information. I I just had to verify it, but uh, guess what? Guess what show Doug Henning was a guest star on? Uh, the Muppet Show. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, it's hiding a theme in this episode. Yeah, exactly. We got to get as many Muppet Show references in as possible. That's why I said Waka Waka at the beginning. <laughs> oh, oh my <laughs> gosh! Every every big you know celebrity star of of an earlier era mm-hmm. appeared on the Muppet Show. Yeah. Um. You know, they they really had a, a great slate of guest stars. Exactly. And uh, Disney, we're still waiting for season four of The Muppet Show on DVD. Mm. Mm. FYI. Anyway. <laughs> and Doug Henning, yeah, he was huge. I, I remember seeing him as a kid. He was just one of those magicians you would see on, you know, late night talk shows or maybe, you know, maybe some of the earlier, you know, talk shows in the in the beginning of the day or something like that. And I just remember from being kind of this silly guy with a mustache. Looked like a very... Uh, nice guy and he uh the guy who the one who i saw to do the best parody of D- doug henning was probably martin short ladies and gentlemen welcome to the world of magic <laughs> for magic is illusion and illusion can be magical is what you see before you an actual reality or simply an illusion for if it's an illusion it must be magic for example This rope that suspends me before you, is it simply a rope or a passageway to an exotic land? Chances are it's just a rope. And uh, I don't think he's alive anymore. I may be wrong, but I don't think Doug Henning's alive anymore. Um, Of course, this is this is um, one of the weird things about this uh, Sir Yaxalot is that it's referencing. Uh, not necessarily Monty Python and the Holy Grail like Kelly was a little bit ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tis a silly place. Spam a lot. That, uh, that, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. You said Holy Grail and my mind instantly went to Last Crusade. Last Crusade. <laughs> I was like, wait, no, that's not Indiana Jones. And then I... Sorry. It's all connected. We're we're in loops. It's okay today. I'm tired. I'm still recovering from my Disney trip. Like, I know. I literally was at the park... From right before 8 a.m. to 1 a.m. Oh my gosh. Saturday, and then bookended by, you know, a seven hour drive to and from. Yes. And then coming to work on Monday morning. Oh my goodness. And yeah, how, so it's, it's been a. And how, been many a ti- how many times were we on the teacups? Only four. Only four. Um, <laughs> but I, we actually did three literally in a row. Oh we, my we got God. On, got off, got on, got off, got on, got off. And. I I was being nice because I mean I didn't want to. My boyfriend was looking a little crazy, so <laughs> I was like, we, "Why you go do something? Like, let's get on the um, Grand Prix Raceway. <laughs> let's go do that for a minute." <laughs> oh my gosh! But he was a trooper. I like most people will only ride them with me once, and they then they say that's enough. No, you're on your own from this time out. And so, like the next eight times I ride them is by myself. So so he has actually was really 
you know, really good. And that's how you know it's true love. If someone's that's willing to. Re- like, we are meant to be. You know, <laughs> four times. You get me look. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> it's not. You can take all that out. I guess. No, no, no. We're leaving that in, Kelly. It's no. <laughs> that's audio gold. Oh man. <laughs> So the the episode right here, so it's kind of a parody of of uh, actually the musical Camelot, which I have never seen. A happy place is Camelot. We like to sing all day, but we can sing the movie score, or else they'll make us pay. They they say they mention in the song, they can't you know reference it. They can't yeah. sing it, or else they'll make us pay mm-hmm. uh, in other so. so but I'm not worried about that. So here's a here's an audio <laughs> sample of Camelot. I saw Spam a lot. Yeah, well, they don't sing that song. Yeah, but, but I liked that musical a lot. <laughs> they do have a. I think that their song of uh, of it sounded a little bit like Knights of the Round Table, don't mm-hmm. you think? Like when the lovely places Camelot, we love to sing all day or whatever mm-hmm. they sing. That definitely sounds like. Oh, name that too. How does it go, Nathan? I don't know. Play it right you here. You saw Spam a lot. Ah, uh, it's like years ago. <laughs> Let us ride to Camelot. We're knights of the round table. We dance where we're able. We do routines and all the scenes. The footwork in Ben Cable. We dine well here in Camelot. We eat ham and jam and spam a lot. But it did. It did uh, remind me that it, the narrator who's introducing this cartoon is the parody of Richard Burton, who was in our previous episode as uh, 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 oh gosh, what's his name? He was in our previous e- episode of Mark Antony. Remember that the pushy cut mm-hmm. and all that. <laughs> well, he's doing the narration. The you know of this episode, the introduction of it, Richard Burton played King Arthur in the original Broadway musical. Okay. okay. But the main actor that we see right here playing, uh, King Arthur is a parody of Richard Harris. And I am really not really familiar with Richard Harris's work other than seeing him in the first Harry Potter film as uh, Dumbledore, I believe. It was in the I first just, two. I just keep seeing Sean yeah. Connery when I see. <laughs> That's right. He was in what was the what was that movie called? It was oh, called, First Night. Was it called First Night? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Him and, and Richard um, Gere and Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I just, every time I see this episode for some I mean the the King Arthur just looks to me like Sean Connery. He does a little bit. You should check out a a side by side though of Richard Harris. Because um, mm-hmm. you can definitely see, you know, some similarities there. He has that kind of longer face. Um, I'd really be interested to see Camelot just to see if uh, he actually does go, please, <laughs> quite often. <laughs> please. You must help me. All right. But if you kiss me, you're slaying your own dragon. Because <laughs> he does do that a yeah. lot in this. Or do the kind of like the high notes of... Uh, I don't know. He just like his volume level changes quite a bit in this uh, King Arthur. So um, it would be interesting to me to see what he really does sound like in the actual movie. So I'll have to watch the movie one of these days. Um, don't we say that about something at least every episode? Exactly. That's true. But well, hey, we we're, so we're making a list. Of, we need to watch. Exactly. One of these days I will. <laughs> it might go on Netflix and then I'll say, okay, I'll watch a few minutes of this. And who knows? Maybe I'll watch the whole thing. <laughs> It uh, Doug Henning it also gets squished by the night when the when the uh, the mm-hmm. Warners come down. It's all right. It's okay. And it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> that of course that of course is a reference to uh, uh, Topo Jiju. Is that the 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 guy's name? Topo Jiju. <laughs> yes, from uh, Santa Claus. No, it's uh, a <laughs> Senior Winces. Senior Winces is the is the. Uh, ventriloquist oh, okay and he would do this all right it's all right like he would open up this box and i would see and, these uh-huh go ahead kelly i'm sorry he was also on the muppet show <laughs> <laughs> well he would do these... i wish i was making this up it's all true gosh. it's all true though but senior <laughs> wins us would do this like gag where i'd see him like an old clips of ed sullivan where he would open up like a box and there'd be like a head inside of it mm-hmm. uh almost like he kind of reminds me of a Oh gosh, that jalapeno on a stick kind of character by uh, 
oh god what's that horrible ventriloquist name <laughs> jeff jeff dunham. dunham i used to hey i liked jeff dunham once once i didn't like him <laughs> i saw <laughs> i saw him in a local comedy club uh, about 20 years ago and i thought he was hilarious and then he's not so funny anymore <laughs> so uh there's a whole Godzilla reference in the whole, this. Yeah, the war room is... Oh, my gosh. Yeah, what a great little uh, thing to pull out of your bag there. <laughs> exactly. Pulls out a war room. That is probably... Yeah, it's definitely... It's more like a portal, I suppose. Yeah. Perhaps something. more reference to the Warner's... It's an inflatable portal, too, because they're going to pop it when they left. More reference to the Warner's being Time Lords, I yeah. think, perhaps. Maybe. Portals opening and stuff. I don't know, but... <laughs> But, uh, yeah, they go down into this giant war room, and, they, of course, they have badly dubbed Japanese people mm-hmm. in there talking about uh, the dragon. Uh, of course, a reference to Godzilla movies of the day. Mm-hmm. And, there's and even, Dr. Strangelove. Exactly. Yeah, Dr. Strangelove there. is in there. like uh, Finding you know, his arm. Yes, trying not to do the Zig Heil kind of thing. I love Dr. Strangelove. Mm-hmm. Such a funny movie. Such a great movie. Uh, Peter Sellers plays, let's see, he plays the president in that, and he plays Dr. Strangelove. And, and he also plays uh, the man trying to convince the general to not Yes, to and he plays like around. the British guy trying to convince the general not yeah. to bomb uh, the world or yeah. Russia or whatever, like that, start World War Three. So he's a, he's a very major part of that, and it's funny in all three of those roles. Yeah, so for such a, for a movie that ends in kind of a dark way and... You know, just dealing mm-hmm. with some so much anxiety of the of the Cold War. It's it is such a funny movie. Yeah, it's, it's really really good. So uh, yeah, check out Doctor Strange Love or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. Which one? Uh, either one is acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> You just watch either one of those movies. Uh, they they point to Perry Mason, who, and for his thoughts, and uh, that is, hey, we we mentioned who's fatter, you know? So, oh gosh, P- Perry Mason, or mm-hmm. I forget the other person that they were talking about. But here's here's a, here's Perry Mason in his earlier days, uh, as the actor, of course, was Raymond Burr, and he appeared in one of the. Uh, Godzilla, I think the first Godzilla movie, at least the, you know, when they kind of moved it over to America, he was uh, one of the scientists in it. And the majority of Godzilla movies are mostly people talking about Godzilla. Yeah, that's why you need to watch it with Mystery Science Theater 3000. <laughs> exactly. Bringing it back to that now. Looping it back around. <laughs> yes. That's the only way to watch, like, you know, any kind of Godzilla or, oh gosh, uh, Gamera. Mm. I was about to say Gamera and Godzilla was one of the best MST3Ks ever. <laughs> yes, with Jet Jaguar. I remember Jet Jaguar in the Godzilla one uh, for Mystery Science Theater, which I love that one. Anyway. Yeah, they sang the Gamera song. Gamera is really neat. Gamera is full of meat. We believe in Gamera. Gamera. <laughs> Uh, we get to the end right here where, uh, Yakko is, you know, doing the slay the dragon. Oh, I love that line. Hey, how about that King Arthur, huh? You know, I'll never forget the first time we met, but I'm trying. (laughs) I'm slaying him. (laughs) Uh, the jokes aren't that great, but he's doing a lot of one-liners. Camelot Comedy Cabaret presents the funniest dragon in all of Camelot, Henny Dragon. And uh, he's parroting uh, Henny Youngman, who uh, would appear in a previous episode of Tiny Toons, by the way, as a as a hen. <laughs> huh. Go figure. But Henny Youngman uh, was like, you know, hey, we're talking about old comedians in this movie. This is all looping around. It ha- yeah. There's all these connections in this one. Henny Youngman was definitely one of the same ilk as George Burns, Milton Berle, all that kind of stuff. And still alive at this point in the 90s, I believe. Hmm. Uh, and, you know, I'd see him every now and then do a few jokes. His most famous joke, take my wife, mm-hmm. please. please. Yay. So there we go. Uh, and, and Yakko kind of doesn't really sound like Henny Youngman to me. He's, he's kind of doing his Bob Hope impression. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. But, uh, it's, it's all over the place. Lots of zaniness, lots of references. The, the dot handing out, uh, candy and gum 
Or dynamite reminded me of the monster, monster. thing. From- I was almost expecting you to say monster, <laughs> but she was already dealing with a monster, so she had to That's give true. you something different, right? They would have probably just fallen in love or something. <laughs> but they wouldn't have because Pinky the Brain were inside. And That's blah, true. Blah, blah, blah. They would have been scared. It would have been a whole thing. Yeah. I I really like this uh, this uh, ending cartoon. What do you guys think? Any other references? Any other gags? Any other moments? Why do you like this uh, cartoon? Uh, I just liked it all through and through, I think. It's just very fun. Okay, Kelly. Any other thoughts on Sir Yaxalot? <laughs> it's just, it's one of my favorites. I almost any time anyone uses the word dragon, I start going the dragon, <laughs> the dragon, the dragon, <laughs> and and I and I don't even know how it comes up in conversation, but somehow I manage to go. It's magic <laughs> <laughs> quite often, really. I and people don't ever know what I'm. I'm, I'm like Yaxalot. <laughs> and I think M. Night Shyamalan saw this and thought, ooh, twist endings. I'm going to go. Is all, yeah. <laughs> they have slain the dragon! The dragon! The dragon! The dragon! Would someone stop these people from yelling dragon? Thank you. Well, I think we got to get right over to our water tower rating. So, what do you guys think? Kelly, we'll start with you this time. What do you think? What? How many water towers out of five water towers, how many does this episode get? I will give it four and a half. Okay. I, it's one of my favorites. Uh, it's got some really great strong segments like Potty Emergency and Sir Axolot. The beginning I, I didn't love, but it was it was good too with the the um, the silent. Well, it's not silent, but the um, somewhat the, silent. Yeah, <laughs> the, the black and white short. Um, it's really cute, but uh, just didn't grab me as much. So that's that's why the half point deduction okay but, uh, no i love it it's one of my favorites fantastic yeah uh, nathan what about you plus they had here's the show's namey and oh, oh that know. dragged it down a little bit yeah and at the end i think what did they say at the end uh, goodbye nurse goodbye nurse so, so it took like, it down a little to over but, five no i'm going for five actually so you are despite those <laughs> <laughs> going um, with a full five fantastic yeah well, uh, i just i really enjoyed all the segments and lots of uh cultural references and Get to see MST3K in there and just, yeah, it's yeah. great. I'm going to give this episode four and a half because, um, yeah, it, it was the first segment was, I guess, could have been a little bit better, but there's so much to talk about. There's so many little things. And honestly, folks, we just kind of scrape the top yeah, of it. Yeah, there's still more to it. It's just... <laughs> because, and, and, and it's like you were saying at the beginning, Kelly, I mean, this is just, again, one of these episodes that, you know, kids can watch this, or, and then if you really want to, hey, you can spend hours and hours and hours actually investigating some of this old stuff. And, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, you, you do become a, a more well-rounded uh, individual when it comes to pop culture, at least, <laughs> when you do that. So that's yeah. cool. All right, well, let's go ahead, and we got our, our announcer's going to do double duty this week. Uh-oh. I hope he can handle it. <laughs> I'm worried about this. He burned a turkey last time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's... This guy is having trouble in his life. Yeah. And I, I, I hate to add extra stress to him, but... <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> sandwich and uh, somehow it spontaneously combusted. Not really sure how that's possible, but um, it happened. Well, anyway, uh, since I'm waiting for these nice firemen to put out the fire in my kitchen, I have some time to give you last week's poll results. Listeners were asked, which of these Rita and Runt cartoons is your favorite? Hashtag Animaniacs. Hashtag Animaniacs Bowl. Five percent said the cat and the fiddle. Nine percent said home on denial. Ten percent said when Rita met Runt. 
but 76% said it was Les Miserables. Well, there we go. That's the winner of the poll, Les Miserables. And, um, it looks like the fire is still going, so, uh, I'll go ahead and give the winner of the Facebook contest as well. So, listeners were asked to like and share last week's show post, and so I'm going to put them all into my little computer here, mix up the names, and find out the winner at random. And that winner will get a set of Animaniacs decals. Oh, exciting. Here we go. Spinny, spinny, spinny. And the winner is... Mr. Jeff Kabzinski. Well, there you go. Jeff, simply send an email over to Animaniacast at RetroZap.com so we can get your contact information and send a set of decals to you. Congratulations. And if you didn't win, don't worry. There'll be other contests in the future. Well, that about does it for me. I'm going to go grab this garden hose and help these firemen put out the fire in my kitchen. See you later. So, no big surprise, folks. It looks like Le Miseranimals uh, was the winner of the best Rita and Runt cartoon. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nathan, what do you think? Le Miseranimals is the best Rita and Runt cartoon so far, for sure. And uh, Kelly, what about you? I'm 24601. <laughs> 24601? <laughs> like the criminal. Oh. Oh, see, you don't even get my reference. I don't even get it. All right, next. Wait, was that a mis- Wait, was that a Le Mis <laughs> reference? Le Mis, Le Mis Rab- See, okay, again, right over my head. Well, you played a little clip of it when we... Uh... Well, just because I played clips and it spent, <laughs> I spent hours and hours getting audio clips doesn't mean I get everything yet. So you don't even listen to them? You just put them on and I just... just put... I randomly put on audio <laughs> clips. That's how I roll. All right, do you want to ask me again? No, no it's okay. I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm picking. I'm picking limb as uh, animals as well. Um, Ooh, uh, why? Because I got bitten in the butt. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so let's go ahead and go to our new question for this week. Mm-hmm. And Nathan, what is it? All right. Well, we asked you before your favorite historical character. We were going to do round two of this. So round we two. Got, we got three Fight. new Fight. historical <laughs> characters. <laughs> yes. Okay, sorry. Let's try this again. <laughs> round two. Fight. <laughs> go ahead, Nathan. Round two of our favorite. Uh, we're crazy today, folks. <laughs> Nathan, go. So the opponents are Beethoven, Lincoln, or Rasputin. So your favorite historical character of those three so far. Um, yeah, they were all in re- recent episodes. Um, Rasputin, of course, uh, lost his teeth. Yes. Uh, Lincoln, they had to teach him how to do four score. Yes. And, and uh, of course, Beethoven needed to learn his, uh, yeah. symphony. And then so. he just got his hair cut recently in, uh, Wacko's, or Yakko's World of Bal- Baldness, right That's there. That's right, so. so. he's, he's come back a couple, at least that time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so go ahead and go to twitter.com slash animaniacast, or simply search on Twitter for hashtag animaniacast poll, and you should be able to find that poll and make your voice heard and tell us who's the the best historical antagonist. There you go. Round two. Fight. Okay. <laughs> the winner last time was, of course, Michelangelo. Oh, yes. Was he? Yeah, 49%. Wow. Okay. Go Michelangelo. Excellent. He beat uh, Albert Einstein and Pablo Picasso. Okay. So very cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and get over to our contact information. And Nathan, let's start with you. How can people get in contact with you? Say hi. Hey, Joey, you can find me on Twitter if you want. All right. We could be friends or whatever on there. Sure. You can follow me, uh, Django FT. That's me. Very cool. And Kelly, how about you? I can be found on Twitter, Yoda Princess, Y-O-D-A-P-R-N-C-S-S. I tweet a lot about Steven Spielberg and Star Wars, surprisingly. Yes. Or email me at kelly at bigshinyrobot.com. Fantastic. And uh, yeah, if, if someone's crazy enough to, to reach out to me, I'm Joey in Tucson on Twitter. And of course, the Animani cast can be found on multiple different places. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. And of course, we're over at retrozap.com where you can go see a full archive of all of our previous shows at retrozap.com. 
slash Animaniacast. Or you can reach out and send us an email, which is Animaniacast at RetroZap.com. You know, speaking of RetroZap.com, everybody, if you have a nerdy need, like, oh, say you want to read about some recent Marvel comic books or what the heck's going on with Star Wars or different things like that, well, RetroZap's a great place to go. You can check out awesome articles and check out a bunch of different podcasts as well, such as Techno Retro Dads, Skywalking Through Neverland, Starship, Sabres and Scoundrels, The Trade Federation, Blues, Brews and Blasters, hmm. uh, The Sandcrawler, and uh, much, much more. Uh, so check them all out at RetroZap.com. You can even subscribe to the RetroZap.com podcast feed and get every single RetroZap.com podcast delivered to your device. For free? For free. <laughs> so head on over there to check that out. Well, with that, I don't know about you two, but this has been kind of a longer episode, and mm-hmm. I go to potty, potty, potty. <laughs> so... For Nathan and Kelly, this is Joey saying good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Boom. The dragon. The, the dragon. dragon. The, the dragon. dragon. <laughs> this podcast is not endorsed by Warner Brothers or Amblin Entertainment and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Animaniacs, the Warner Brothers logo, all names, pictures, and sounds of the Animaniacs characters or any other Animaniacs related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Warner Brothers, Amblin Entertainment, or their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of the Animaniacs unless otherwise indicated. Come, Pinky. Back to the drawing board. Stand in the corner! Naughty frog! <laughs> They're Pinky, they're Pinky, I'm the brain, 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 brain. <laughs>